Hello and welcome. Thank you so much for joining me today. My name's Heather. I'm a songbird stamper. I'm an independent stamping up demonstrator from the UK. I'm here today to show you a lovely technique which I don't use all that often. It's called paper piecing. Can you see her dress here? It's got this pattern on it. Well, it's because I haven't coloured it in like I have the rest of the image. It's actually stamped on patterned paper, cut out and popped on. And you can do this with so many different stamp sets and so many different cards. But I'm just going to show you this one today and just show you how easy it is to do. So I've got this in the moment stamp set. Gorgeous stamp set, but actually I'll be honest, this is the first time I've used it. Um, and you could use this one and paper piece her top and her trousers. Or this one and paper piece the duvet in with a nice floral duvet or something like that. But I thought this one was a nice simple one to start with with her dress. So that's the stamp set I'm going to be using today. And I've got a piece of thick basic white card and that's measuring 21 centimetres by 14.5 scored in half at 10.5 centimetres. So standard size card base for me. I've then got a piece of basic white card stock and that's 10 centimetres by 14. All the measurements will be over on my blog which is just here www.thesongbirdstamper.co.uk and there'll be a link in the description below as well. So this is the um, piece of cardstock I've got and this is three and three sixteenths of an inch and this is three by three inches. That just gives me a really lovely border but if you don't like sixteenths of an inch just go three and a quarter inches okay just to make it a bit bigger and then you'll need some patterned paper so whatever pattern paper you want. I've gone for a slightly different one but almost the same it's just got a few more leaves and things on it you could go for this side as well if you wanted. So whatever you want, but just not too big a pattern because it's quite a small area that we're going to be working on. So first things first, I'm just going to take some memento ink, some black ink, because I'm going to be using my alcohol markers. So the memento ink is the right ink to use. And I'm going to stamp this once onto this square of cardstock here that I've got. Try and line it up as straight as possible. And as centrally as possible. Okay, so we'll put that to one side and I'm going to stamp it again onto this piece of paper here. And I don't worry about missing off her head or her shoulders because you don't need the whole image on there. But that's just where I'm going to stamp it for now. So I'll pop the lid back on that one. And then you need to do a little bit of fussy cutting. And obviously if you've got a specific patch of the design that you want to stamp her dress onto, you can try and line that up. So I've got quite a lot of leaves down here, but quite plain at the top. So that's fine for me, but if you wanted the leaves all over, you just need to pick where you choose it. And then all I'm doing is following the line of her dress. So I'm going to cut up here and round here, but then I'm going to chop her arm off. A bit brutal isn't it but you know needs must sometimes sorry lady and then I'm going to come underneath her hair so it's just a case of thinking when you stamp your image and when you start fussy cutting like this which bits you want to keep and which bits you need to cut away so again just following the contour of her dress and then here I'm going to chop her arm off And then back to following the contour of the dress. And then the bottom bit, I'm just going to go from line to line. And I'm going to create a kind of wavy, just to simulate or emulate the bottom of a dress. And then we have our paper piece to dress. So we can pop that to one side, but it will eventually lay on like that. And I think it's just a really, really beautiful way of adding a bit of... Um, yeah, difference in, rather than having it so coloured solid flat. So the colours I'm working with here are Crumb Cake, Crumb Cake Dark, Crumb Cake Light. And I'm going to use the dark only for the railings here. So when I'm just using one colour, I'm going to get that kind of 3D look by going back in with the same colour. 
because multiple layers of the same colour blend give you a darker effect. So if I go back over that now, a little bit under here and under here, I'm going to start to build up that 3D look, even though I'm just using one colour of blend. I'm running another blends course later in the year, so if you're kind of thinking, oh, I'd love to learn more about colouring, then um, do head over to my website and check out the details, <clears throat> because it's a fab course. I've run it twice so far. It is um, four lessons long. You can either choose a product base or an online only version. And everybody I've taken through says they've either learnt lots kind of either a beginner and they've learnt loads and kind of got on their way or even that they're, um, they've been colouring a long time and they've picked up a few new hints and tips that they weren't aware of. This crumb cake is so on its last legs, it's great, causing it be hard work to uh, colour with to be honest, but there we go. And then just a little bit of colour lifter. very deep there. So that is the crumb cake. Then her hair I've just done in Daffodil Delight. That's the light one. And then just go in with a bit of dark. Skin I've done it in ivory, and again to get some definition and some texture, you're going to have to use that multiple layer technique. She looks so chilled out here, so I'm just coming back in, just where there would be a little bit of shadow. Don't need to worry about the dress. I've got some rosé wine going on, I think, because that's my favourite wine. Did struggle with the colour to use on this, but I went for Ferti Flamingo in the end. Looks like a summer rosé. And then I have just used my um, light balmy blue. And I've used the brush tip. to create this kind of sky I keep it in nice horizontal lines definitely not going right up to the edge of the cardstock There, you could keep, you could come under here as well and do that. I think um, I wasn't sure whether to or not, but I have left that blank. And then we're going to do the magic of paper piecing. So we've got her dress here. So as you see, you could have gone for that side and gone for a kind of pool party look, but I want Granny Apple Green. Nice bright summer dress for her. So we just put some glue on the back. And then you can just lay that in place. And that is paper piecing. It's really, really easy. But I don't know why I don't use the technique. It's like with a lot of craft techniques, I think. We just forget about them. Better to pull it down a little bit. I'd stuck it a bit too high. Yeah, we kind of forget about all of these techniques. There's so many. I said to my um, team members, start up a technique binder. It's a really good way to kind of keep track of all these different techniques we learn. And then when you think, sit and think, you know, I want to make something, but I'm not sure what to make. Because don't we all do that? You'd be able to um, just flick through your binder and go, oh, paper piecing. Let's have a go with that. 
So that's our image. Now I've kept this card really, really clean and simple um, because I love the sentiment I'm going to use. And it says, sometimes the most productive thing you can do is relax. You don't want a kind of busy, busy card for that kind of sentiment. And I'm going to stamp straight onto my layer. And I don't often use my Stampratus, or Stampratus, however you call it, but I am going to now. So what I'm going to do is pop that in the top corner, top right hand corner, then I can kind of lay everything out, make sure I get the borders that I want, make sure this is central. Then you close the lid straight. Close the lid, pick the stamp up, ink it up. And what that means is that if I get a bad stamp, I can go back in and stamp again. So that looks good to me. Sometimes the most productive thing you can do is relax. It looks a little if it looks a little bit dark here and light here, that's because my memento ink pad. And I've tried to fix it and I don't really know how to get it any better than it is. I need to kind of wipe it clean completely and start again. I've got splodges of ink in there and no matter how much smoothing out of it I try and do, it doesn't really seem to work. So all I'm going to do is stick that layer straight on. To be honest, for the money, they're at £5 I think. I probably ought to just buy a new one. Um, don't like to be wasteful so I keep trying to fix it and then this can go straight onto some dimensionals Sometimes these come off so easily, and other times it just takes me a second to pull them off. And there we go, that's going to lay straight on with a nice even border all the way around the top. And that's our card. Clean, simple, I'm not even going to add any bling, just a lovely card to send somebody to tell them sometimes the most productive thing you can do is to relax. So I've got a couple of samples um, that I've seen with paper piecing. This one was given to me at a swap by the lovely Sue Jackson. So she's paper pieced the boots here, so that's stamped in yellow onto yellow paper. And then they're used on the card. Beautiful, love that, love that card. This one was made by the lovely Emma Goddard, so she's um, stamped the mouse and the balloon, and then she's paper piece the balloon, stamped it onto some dotty paper, cut it out and laid it over the top. This one I made and um, this bird and the flowers is stamped on white and then stamped onto coloured paper, fussy cut out and then laid on top as well. Nice stunning birthday card and here again with the rain boots stamped in grey onto dotty paper um, because haven't we all had when we were little those um, spotty rain boots so that's it a few samples for you a few ideas for you um, and I am running a class if you're local to me and you fancy having a go at paper piecing um, I'll be running it on the 5th 4th of March Friday the 5th of March Denmead Community Centre uh, in Hampshire um, you can come and have a go at this yourself and I will be there teaching and helping people through thanks so much for joining me take care of yourselves I will see you all again soon Bye for now.